Hallelujah. Let's give God praise this morning, Lord. We thank you. Father God, we thank you. We worship and magnify and glorify your great and holy name. You are faithful. You are worthy of all praise and glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. As we open our service in prayer this morning, we want to pray for all of our current needs that are displayed on our screens. We also want to pray for needs of healing, needs of recovery, lifting these up by name. Again, many names on our screens. We want to pray for those that are in need of salvation, those that are unsaved, those that are backslidden, that God would draw to repentance, drawing hearts to salvation. We want to pray for uh, the upcoming healing services in White River uh, by Pastor Hart's going to be ministering that, uh, believing God for supernatural breakthrough, miracle healing, praying for all of our pastoral staff, our church council, God's hand of protection and wisdom. We want to pray for all of our churches, our pastors that have been sent out, our pioneer works, these brand new startup churches, that God would give these pastors wisdom all of our national works, all of our missionaries overseas, our leadership churches, our evangelists, that God would overshadow their lives. We want to pray for our nation revival in America. We want to pray for the nation of Israel, God's hand of protection upon them, all of our active military, all of our first responders, that God would overshadow their lives. We want to pray for this service this morning, anointing, Upon Pastor Greg Mitchell as he ministers, that God is going to have right of way, speak to our, us and that we will leave changed and encouraged by the preaching of the word. How many as we're gathered, you have a need on your heart this morning, you'd lift your hand. Amen. We're going to join together in prayer. And you lift up in your own words, your request, you make your need known to God. And then evangelist J.W. Ballinger will come and pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. Lord, that we have access to your throne of grace, that we can find help. In our time of need, Lord, we lift up each and every request that's been brought before you. God, that you are going to respond in the miraculous needs of healing, needs of recovery, those that are battling infirmities, Every sickness and disease, oh God, I speak healing virtue in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we lift up those that are unsaved, those that are backslidden, draw to repentance, draw to salvation, Father God. Father, we thank you that we are able to come before your throne this morning. Thanking you for your faithfulness and your goodness. Uh, that you are a God who hears and answers prayer even this morning in this moment. Uh, we're asking you for the anointing of your Holy Ghost upon Pastor Greg. Uh, let our ears be open for the hearing and our hearts for the receiving. Uh, Lord, making your will plain and making your will known that we may respond and leave this place changed and transformed. We give you all the glory and give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. We just want to first of all say welcome to our Sunday morning service and our live stream broadcast. If you are a guest with us here this morning at the Potter's House, we just want to say thank you for joining us and we hope that you feel welcome. Amen. With that, why don't we show our events video. And you can follow all of our upcoming events on our app or on our website. Uh, but just some highlights here. Foundations for the Faith. This is a New Believers Bible study. Happens every Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. in the West Main entrance. If you have any questions, you can see Devin Riles for more information. 
Then this evening, as part of our evening service, we're going to be having a water baptism. If you are a new believer and you would like to be baptized in water, uh, please get your name uh, to Devin Riles, and we can do that at the conclusion of this evening's service. Then just some highlights, and you can see the app for all of these details. We're going to be having a healing service on Friday evening. Details on the app. A afternoon block party Saturday afternoon. You can find those details on the app. And then an impact team to Middle Verde is going to be heading down to help Pastor Delbert John. Again, sign up and details on the app. Uh, then uh, into next week, Monday, April 29th at 7 p.m., we're going to be having a ministry meeting where we will be reviewing the vows of exampleship. If you are involved in ministry, public ministry, uh, please, we need you to be there at that. If you're interested in joining, I uh, invite you to participate in that April 29th at 7 p.m. Then, just before we go into our outreach reports, I would like to invite uh, Ben and Magali Lopez, if you would just stand. This couple is returning from being missionaries in Colombia. They're coming into the Prescott congregation to be refreshed and to learn. I invite you to help me, please, Welcome them to our congregation. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Do appreciate their labors and ministry over the years. With that, we're going to have some outreach reports and uh, many that we have of outreach and evangelism. Let's welcome Preston to the microphone. Hey, uh, so we had uh, some youth and we got them together for, and we went over to Walmart and we gave out flyers for both Cafe 180 and Normal 180 and we saw several visitors. We gave testimonies. It was very powerful and very exciting. At the end of the night, we saw five souls saved, one for Jesus, and I give God the praise and glory for that. Thank you. It was a privilege to be a part of Pastor Hart's uh, kind of new vision for the 180. He wanted to do something different, and so we did the Cafe 180, which was quite a bit toned down, acoustic music, table seating, food, and a beverage. But uh, we had music, we had farce, we had drama, and we had testimonies. And uh, I really appreciate everybody that came out and supported that. And I, I want to take a poll. Everybody that was there, let's hear a shout out if you enjoyed what you saw. Anybody? Okay, might do this again. <laughs> so, so anyway, I just really want to, uh, we had, uh, nobody answered the appeal to get saved, but Pastor Hart did uh, ask if there was anybody that needed healing, and we had six visitors there, and one man, he stood up because he had some neck and back pain, and set him down in a chair, saw his leg grow out, and his pain was gone after that, and we give got all the glory for what he did. Every Saturday morning we meet at the 180 Event Center there in Prescott Valley and we go into the Tri-City or, or Quad City area and we go and we go door to door. Sometimes we'll go to Walmart, different places, but yesterday we went uh, promoting a couple of different events that are coming up this weekend and uh, had some great witnesses, great opportunities to share our testimonies. And at the end of that, we had one person give their life to Jesus. Such a blessing to be part of this church that believes in evangelism. They have been uh, doing concerts for the last 50 years, we know that. Uh, we're still doing it every Saturday night. Uh, we were at the 180 last night, uh, 6050 East uh, uh, State Highway 69. Uh, we had concert, uh, we had music, we had drama. It was a great night. The Spirit of God was there. Uh, I had the privilege of preaching the altar call, and we had six people answer the altar call. And we want to give God glory for that. Thank you. Yesterday, a group of people from Hispanic service, we have the opportunity to go to Aguila, Arizona. In the morning, we start, started to preach the gospel on the streets, passing flyers, invite the people, talking to people about the Jesus Christ. After that, at 1 p.m., we start playing music, sharing testimonies, 
Also, we share cheeseburgers and sodas, everything free for the visitors. Uh, I preach the gospel. I declare to people God is, is the way, the truth, and the life. We declare to people we live in the last days, um, in the end, in the altar call. Uh, many people, God touched uh, many people right there. In the end, we saw 13 people saved. Praise God. Amen. Wonderful reports if the ushers would come. This is just what you're seeing if you're a guest with us here this morning. Uh, we are evangelistic focused, taking the gospel outside of these four walls into areas of our Quad City, outside of our uh, uh, Quad City area, and preaching the gospel, bringing people to a point of decision for Jesus Christ. And each one of these outreaches that you've heard reports on, these are everyday people uh, living for God, taking initiative, taking the gospel, but that's also facilitated by the faithful giving of our congregation. Amen. 13 in Aguila, uh, six last night in our concert, uh, uh, one on our outreach, Preston, the youth going out, five safe. Praise God. We need to give God praise for all of these reports. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you for breakthrough. And this, amen, is what we give towards. I invite you to join with me this morning. Amen. If I could ask Matt Hepburn, bless the offering. Amen. Let's sing that song. Lift him higher. I will praise your name, O Lord. Lift him higher, let our praises sing wonders of his love. Lift him higher, for he deserves the glory. Lift him higher, let our praises sing wonders of his love. Lift him higher, for he deserves. There's a king who reigns. There's a king who reigns over all of my tomorrows. There's a king. Over all my yesterdays, there's a king who reigns over present circumstances, and I'm glad that Jesus is the king. So I choose, and so I choose, I choose to trust him, and I choose, I choose to praise. There's a king who reigns over all. The King who reigns over all my yesterdays. There's a King who reigns over present circumstances. And I'm glad that Jesus is the Amen. Good morning. Wonderful to see you all. I uh, just got back. I'm in the middle of my crazy uh, travel schedule, but had a great time. I went to Buenos Aires, Argentina, and uh, preached a rally there. All of the churches across Argentina come together, and then also pastors from across South America, because in the mornings, at night I preach to everyone, in the mornings I preach to the pastors. I think we had 65 pastors there, and I teach them about preaching and then minister to them directly, and so that was just fantastic what God is doing in South America. I uh, went from there and went to Cape Cod, Massachusetts. The Northeast Bible Conference is there. Paul and Linda Campo, pastor, and I preached in that. I saw Anthony and Natalie Cassio there, and uh, they, uh, you pray for them right now. They've put an offer on a building, so they're hoping to open soon. So it was a very, very good time, but I'm glad to be home be able to preach the Word of God to you this morning. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Exodus, 
chapter 29, businesses understand if you want to have sales, it's not enough simply to have a building or a store and to have products. You have to invest in order to make people feel welcome. That can be paint and decor, lighting, and then they're learning even smells influence people to, uh, to purchase. A grocery store invested in machines that pump out certain smells while you shop, like chocolate. Sales went up 70% simply when they started making it smell like chocolate. A convenience store, they installed one of these out near the gas pump. They started putting out the smell of coffee and the sales of coffee went up 300%. So the point in, in doing that uh, I don't know what smell we'd have to have in church in order to, to, uh, to help. My point is that they understand if you want a certain result, you have to invest. That's just a principle in all of life. But it actually is also true in the kingdom of God. We are involved in God's kingdom business, the salvation of souls. And in our text, it speaks about offerings that bring the presence of God. And I want to preach about offerings of the presence. Uh, Exodus 29, starting at verse 38. Now this is what you shall offer at the altar. Two lambs of the first year, day by day, continually. One lamb offer in the morning, the other uh, lamb offer at twilight. With the one lamb, there shall be one-tenth of an ephah of flour, mixed with one-fourth of a hin of pressed oil, one-fourth of a hin of wine, as a drink offer, offering. The other lamb you shall offer at twilight, offer with it the grain offering, the drink offering, as in the morning, for a sweet aroma. An offering made by fire to the Lord. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle, the meeting before the Lord, where I will meet you to speak with you, and there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory or my presence. So I will consecrate the tabernacle of meeting and the altar. I will consecrate also both Aaron and his sons to minister before me as priests. I will dwell among the children of Israel and I will be their God and they shall know that I am the Lord their God who brought them up out of the land of Egypt that I might dwell among them for I am the Lord their God. Offerings of the presence. I want to begin, I want to talk about the principle of offerings. In this text, God has commanded the principle of offerings. Offerings are not the tithe. Tithe means tenth. It is a prescribed by God, the first 10% of our income. Deuteronomy 14, 22, you shall surely tithe. That's tenth. You shall give 10% of all the increase of your, of your grain that the field produces. When people, when you're a believer and you tithe, that simply shows that you agree with God's ownership in your life. He determines the amount. It's a regular way every time you get paid of showing God, I agree that you are God and I am not. But our text is not speaking about the tithe, it's talking about offerings. Five times it uses the word offer. Four times our text uses the word offering. The word offer means to bring or to give and an offering is, of course, the gift that is given. The difference between tithe, when the amount is set by God, and offerings is that offerings, the amount, are set by you. It is totally up to you. The Old Testament calls these free will offerings. That means from your own desire. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly but or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. See, offerings reveal the heart in different ways than the tithe. As I said, the tithe reveals whether you agree with God's ownership. Offerings are different. They reveal your love for God. Relationship with God as a Christian is a response. 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. In other words, we respond 
to God's love, and it should be gr based in gratitude. We are thankful for what God has done, so we want to give. Luke 17, the leper who was healed returned to give thanks. Mary, who was delivered, brought a valuable box of perfumed ointment. She was grateful for what God had done for her and her family. Numbers 31, the soldiers, they go out to battle, and at the end of very dangerous combat, they come back, and they said, not one soldier was killed, and so they are grateful, so each soldier brought an offering. Luke 7, 47, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. This woman, because she had been set free by Jesus Christ, the natural response is she wanted to give a gift. She wanted to return a blessing to Jesus Christ. This is true in the Christian life. When people are not grateful, the natural result is they do not want to give. A man named Emil Mettler, he used to own a restaurant in London many years ago. Once the cash register opened and his friend who was visiting saw right there laying among the bills was a six inch long nail and he asked him, Emil, what is a nail doing in the cash register? And he said, I keep this nail with my money to remind me of the price that Christ paid for my salvation and what I owe him in return. Every time you choose to give an offering which the amount is totally up to you, you demonstrate to God your love and gratitude for him. But offerings also reveal your love for God's work. If you love God, you are going to love what God loves. And the Bible says, God loves the church. It is his plan. The church is God's instrument that he uses to accomplish his work of salvation in the earth. God wants people to be saved what you just heard was what? Four or five uh, reports of outreaches. People were saved. Why? Because the church provided a means of proclaiming the gospel. And so here, if you love God, you will love his work. And this is a truth. You know, we've, we've had people through the years who have left our church left the fellowship in rebellion. They've spoken against it. They've tried to do damage to the church or to God's work. But later on, you know, when Pastor Mitchell was getting on in years, they said how much they loved Pastor Mitchell. But the problem is you said you loved Pastor Mitchell, but you didn't love what Pastor Mitchell loved because he loved the church. He loved the fellowship. That is true of you and I with the church, 2 Corinthians 8, 8. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of love, of, of your love. You should want your local church to do well because if the local church does well, then outreach does well and churches planted do well. Let's talk secondly about the purpose of offerings. In our text, it, this is a specific offering that was taken. They were trying to raise money, or they did raise money, to build a tabernacle. The tabernacle, this was actually a fancy tent. But the purpose that is stated in our text is offerings bring God's presence down to where we live. We know that God is everywhere. Right now, God is at Lynx Lake. God is at the mall. But he's not doing at Lynx Lake or the mall what he will do in church. So giving, our text, is all about the presence of God coming down where people live. Verse 43, there... I will meet with the children of Israel. The tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory or by my presence. They'll know that I'm the Lord their God who brought them out of the land of Egypt that I may dwell among them. This is what happens when there are people that give. 
When people love God's work enough, when they love God and love his work enough to invest financially, God repeats a number of times, I will dwell. I will come down. It talks about this word glory, which is the presence of God manifested in a way that you can tell that God is there. See, people need to have an encounter with God. They don't just need to know about God. They need to hear what God has to say. They need to see God at work. They need to feel uh, God's presence. There's something powerful about God being made real. Our text says they will know that I'm the Lord, their God. Something needs to happen in a church service that makes God real to help people know. There have been times and we've had new converts. They get saved. God is doing a good work in their lives. But when they go to work, some person who's religious goes to another church or another religion, starts filling their head full of nonsense, but they remember what they feel in church. They remember what it felt like when they got saved. They remember when they come to church and they hear a sermon and and it is like God is speaking to them Personally, that is what needs to happen in the church. And the Bible says, offerings enable that. This is the logic behind something that we do, which we'll do this morning. And that is called giving pledges. Pledge means promise. We take pledges, which is, we say, how many people here, you believe in God's work of evangelism in church planting, outreach locally, church planting in the United States, and church planting internationally, and we ask who would like to give above the tithe extra money in order to be able to uh, uh, pay for that. Because people cannot do God's will on their own. There are couples, Anthony and Natalie had a burden to go to Boston, Massachusetts. That's fine. We enabled that. If Anthony and Natalie wanted to build a church in Boston by themselves, they wouldn't be able to do it. It is very expensive right now. Negotiating East Coast prices are uh, outrageous. He's negotiating probably the monthly rent on a 2,500 square foot building will probably cost more than $5,000 a month, just church rent. That is the way it is. So when we give... We enable people to do the will of God. Romans 10, 25, how shall they hear unless they are sent? And the people that we send in the United States or internationally, they contain God's presence. They're filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they build a church. They build another place where people in another location can meet with God. Acts 9, 15 He is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. When we give offerings, we are uh, enabling God's presence to come down in the same way that people feel God's presence. They hear from God here. Now we are enabling it all across the United States and all across the world. Let's look at some of the places we currently invest in on a monthly basis. We're going to look at a number of photos and each of these we're enabling the presence of God to be here. This is in Juba, South Sudan. The Neris are there. You see on the top left, Christmas Day went out to a prison and preached the gospel to the prisoners. That's biblical. 40 prisoners were saved that day. In the middle, here is the church is being built. Don't don't move off photos unless I tell you In the middle is the church, and on the right, there's a disciple. That is a South Sudanese disciple preaching for the very first time. The vision is being reproduced. Thank God. Next photo is Camp Verde. Here are Delbert and Arlinda building a work for God. In the bottom is the Chris Hart revival. They finally were able to get their own building. That's in the bottom left. They now have a building of their own. In uh, uh, the top right, you see Shana and Pam that have been saved. The top left, uh, this uh, man is Brian Crone. His wife had gotten saved. He swore, I will never 
go there, but guess what? He came and got powerfully saved. He is living for God now, going on outreach. Thank God. Next photo. Arielor in India. The Samuels are laboring in India. That woman on the left, Ms. Samuels, was a radical Catholic, uh, came and heard the gospel of Jesus Christ for the first time. She got saved. Ask Marcus Samuel, come, please, pray for my sister. She's at a local, uh, they have a, a home church going in a different area. Come pray for my sick sister, which he did, and, and God helped there. Handed him an envelope, and Marcus said, normally an Indian may give 10 to 50, 50 rupees. Inside, she handed him 2,000 rupees, and he was kind of shocked by the amount. She said this, I didn't know that God could be so personal. And she says, I have a peace now that I never had as a Catholic. That is in India. We thank God for what he's doing. Next photo. Here is Sarasota, Florida. John and Dana Duff are laboring there. You see in the left, Nicole and Jason. They were saved out of a life of drug addiction and crime. And when they got saved, they said, we want to get married. They're, they're holding their marriage certificate. Got married on that day. Uh, this man testifying, getting baptized. Daniel spent close to 20 years in prison. He was the leader of a violent gang for many years. Got saved, got baptized, and now is going on outreach, telling people about Jesus in Sarasota, in Florida. Thank God. Next. <clears throat> Honiara and the Solomon Islands, the Martinez's are there. This shows a revival with John Perry who preached. They had more than 50 people saved, 35 people got healed. And then uh, you also see in the top left, this is one of their baby churches. We invested in Honiara. Now they're planting. This is in Lunga. Uh, Pastor Rocky recently opened, had 30 people saved and 16 people healed. Vientan Laos, next photo. Here's Gordon and Mary Porter are laboring and they held a, a joint baptism with some of the other churches there. They had a, a, a total, I think, of 11 baptized, two of them. The bottom right there, I think this young man's name is Mai, uh, got saved and uh, he told me that Mai, last night after we, I put the sermon together, he said that Mai brought a new family over to his house having dinner. Gordon and Mary are reaching people in Vientiane in the nation of Laos. Thank God. Next photo, Tampa, Florida. Uh, here is uh, uh, Hector and Rosa Trevino on the left. Hector battled self-hatred and rage, got saved as serving Jesus. On the right, Rich and Julie Clement. Rich had suffered abuse and violence growing up. He, as he grew, he became uh, violent and abusive, turned to drugs and alcohol to deal with depression. He said, now when I got saved, the depression, the drugs, the alcohol, and the anger are gone. And now Rich says, I want to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank God. Thank God. Here we go. Kathmandu, Nepal. Here's Sanjay uh, Tripathi and his wife are laboring there. And this is a, a church that Gordon and Mary originally pioneered. This is a revival of Micah Wright. And uh, they are building a work for God in Kathmandu. Next photo, El Dorado Park in, in South Africa. Jonathan and Rachel Heimberg are uh, pastoring the church. Lisa and I originally pio uh, pioneered. The Bannets were there for many years. And uh, here you see on the right, Michael Jacobs was uh, one of our original converts didn't do well for a number of years, but here he is testifying uh, on an outreach. He's doing very good. On the left, that's a morning service. What you see there, 295 people in church that day. Jonathan made a call uh, for those who feel called to preach the gospel. All those down at the altar are those who responded and said, I want to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank God. Next photo. Out of El Dorado Park, they planted a, a church into the nation of uh, Eswatini. Manzini is the city in Eswatini. The Brills, when they arrived, even before they had a building, they, they and their uh, daughters were witnessing on the streets. They had, to, uh, let me see here, 387 people saved in the first month just in outreaching by themselves. Their daughter began to witness to some students from a, a local uh, school. 
They invited her to come uh, speak to the teachers, began witnessing to a science teacher who was challenging her, arguing with her, but she told him about a healing that she had uh, uh, experienced and finally asked him, would you like to get saved? He said yes, and, uh, uh, prayed a prayer of salvation. Another teacher asked her to pray because she was in pain. The teacher got healed. And this is what you see. That is that teacher, 38-year-old teacher, got saved. The church hasn't even opened. He's on outreach witnessing, telling people about Jesus in Eswatini. Thank God. Our now you're seeing the multiplying effect. One church is now uh, affecting others. Next photo, Tianjin in China. And uh, here you see this uh, couple that is uh, Johnny and Annabella. Johnny was uh, depressed and withdrawn, got saved, he said, for the first time. He said, I feel like I'm beginning a new life and I'm excited for the future. Bottom left, that's their friend Paul who also came and got saved, so God is building a work in Tianjin in China. Next photo, Charlotte, North Carolina. Here is our very own Manny and Patty are in Charlotte. Here you see the top left is uh, one of the first times they took the church out on outreach and they joined them for church. And uh, the other photos on the bottom here, the church is being built. They have a temporary building for right now. And uh, on the right, in the Jacksonville, North Carolina church, they brought 14 new converts and, uh, to uh, be in the conference there. Thank God. <laughs> Next, Gross Island, St. Lucia. And uh, here the Flitcrofts are laboring there. They had a revival with John Perry. It did a great job. That young man, uh, Troy, in, on the left there, Troy, uh, was uh, depressed and lonely and hurting, got saved and is being transformed. This is now in an island of the Caribbean. God is building a work. Next photo, Vailoa, American Samoa, brand new church there. The Joneses are there laboring, don't even have a building yet. This is in their house. You see a work being built. To, Samoans are getting saved, baptizing in the yard. Numbers of people coming together. A work is being built. I just heard the other day, it looks like he they finally has a, a, a line on a building in American Samoa. That work is being built. Next photo, Boston, Massachusetts. Here's our very own Anthony and Natalie witnessing. <clears throat> Amen. Anthony and Natalie have been getting people saved on the street. Right after they were there, they were coming back uh, at night and a car plowed into them. 10 o'clock at night, wiped out their car, completely totaled. Anthony went to the car dealership to buy a new car and met that young man, Jorens, and he's a, a Brazilian witness to him. He got saved. They don't have a building yet, and so what do they do? They had Bible study at Starbucks. Jorens brought his girlfriend. She got saved, and uh, so now they're holding Bible studies until they have a building. Anthony then, something was wrong with the car, went back uh, to get it worked on, witnessed to another man, and he got saved. And so I told Anthony, you're on a roll, man. You started taking off wires. I go, I got to take it back in again. But we thank God that young man came to conference in Cape Cod in uh, just last week. And we, a work is being built in Boston, Massachusetts. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Next photo, this is Kimberley, South Africa. The Strucks are laboring there. You see on the top left, that's an outreach at Christmas. Then you see on the uh, top right, that's a, their eight-year anniversary. They held an outdoor service, bottom left. Patrick Johnson preaching at a school and, uh, of course, having hundreds of people saved. They finally planted uh, two churches, and I think they have it on the next slide here. The first one, uh, Lorado Park, they planted them, and this is uh, Alfred and, and uh, Phallus. They are building a work now exactly like their mother church now in this area called Lorado Park. Next photo in an area called Galashewe. Uh, Tabiso and Mo are now witnessing. They're outreaching just like they were taught. And you see a work is being built in an area called Galashewa. And uh, this is close to Kimberley in South Africa. Next photo, 
Kolkata, India. Here is our very own Chris and Vicky Went, laboring in the massive city of Kolkata, India. And uh, you see here baptizing people the, on the left side. Here are two of the converts that are getting saved. Up at the top, you see uh, Stephen Cassio did a revival, had a number of people saved. That uh, couple up there, uh, the man got healed and was ministered to bottom right. Here's the group of people being built together in Kolkata, India. Next photo, Fort Myers, Florida. Fort Myers, the Sangers are laboring there. And uh, what you see on the left, our very own Nate Rush did a revival there. I think last week or the week before in the revival, seven people saved, five healed, two filled with the Holy Ghost. And then you see here, there's a, a, one of the converts that has gotten saved and you might recognize him. Uh, on the bottom right, there's our very own John Crow that originally got saved in our rehab. That's he and his wife. They're laboring and uh, God is building a work in Fort Myers. Next photo, our very own uh, Ro uh, Rojos uh, are building, uh, building a work in Mazatlan, Mexico and uh, doing a, a great work. You see there, that is their very first 180 concert. They had one of the churches came and helped them. They uh, 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 had the, that. Then you see here's a healing service. The bottom is uh, bottom right is uh, our own Matt Sanderlin went for a wedding and preached a healing service. And in there people were saved and healed. And uh, God is doing great things. Next photo, Grassy Park in South Africa. Grassy Park, Brandon and Andrea Pepich from our congregation are laboring there. He said he was inspired. He challenged his church for one week. They went out every night to uh, outreach into a gang-infested neighborhood, had 90 people saved. Many gang members came to church and filled with the Holy Ghost the next week. The top left, this couple, they were heroin addicts. For years, they were heroin addicts, got saved, got baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, and they got married. God is doing a great work there. Thank God. And then finally, here is Ansirabe, Madagascar. They did Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. That's what you see in the top left. Here is the church being built in, in uh, uh, Ansirabe. There's some of the couples in the church in that photo. Next photo, I want you to, I'm going to tell you some stories from Ansirabe. This couple here, this is Lucien and uh, Boarina, Boariana. She got saved. The husband swore he would never come. He was part of a tribe that is heavily involved in the occult, black magic, witchcraft. Even they still practice human sacrifice at times. That is the tribe that he belonged to. The people in the church, they said, it is impossible for someone from that tribe to ever get saved. They're so wicked, there's no way. But he came and got saved. And one of the things you see in the top right, that is right after he got saved, you can't tell, but he has long hair because in their tribe, as a dedication to their gods and the demon spirits, the men, they all wear long hair, but he came to church with a haircut. And when Pastor Nati asked him about it, this is what he said. He said, I no longer belong to my tribe. Now I belong to Jesus' tribe. Thank God. Isn't that wonderful? Next photo, also in Ansirabe. Here, this a couple here. This is Nathaniel and Olivia. Olivia is a twin, but in Madagascar, to be a twin is considered a curse. If twins are born, they normally will either kill one of the babies or they will send the twins away because they think that it curses their life. Olivia got saved with her husband. She said she spent her entire life separated from her sister, kept it a secret, would never tell anyone that she was a twin because of how they would uh, treat her. Her whole family has rejected her. They wanted nothing to do with her simply because she is a twin. So she is saved and she asked her husband, she said, do you think we could invite my sister? Her sister, that's who you see there, came and got saved as well. For the first time in their life, they were together in the same place. 
because Jesus, she says, I'm no longer afraid to say that we're twins because God has accepted them. Our identity is in Jesus Christ. Changing lives, thank God. Final photo, this is Roger and uh, Fitiavana. When they came in and got saved, she was already pregnant, was going to have an abortion. She came in the morning, came back that night. Roger, her boyfriend, came. He also gave his life to Jesus. And the Hadebes spoke to them and uh, talked to them that that would be wrong. Why don't you give this baby a chance at life? They decided to keep the baby and, that, and to get married. And here they are, the baby is born. The miracle of this couple, num miracle number one, is that not one person on either side of the family are legally married. They are the first members of either side of their family who have ever gotten legally married. But they are holding a baby. That baby is alive today because we invested offerings. We need to give God praise and thank God. Oh God, what a privilege it is to be a part of your will. All that I just showed you, and that's not all of the churches that we support, that's all I have time for. All of them, we give offerings that enable the presence of God to come down in a local uh, uh, place. Those are people, you saw faces on the screen, people who are being changed, people who will not be in hell because we gave. Final thought, let's talk about the power of offerings. Why is there a connection between giving offerings and the presence of God? God said, when you give, I will come down. Number one, because offerings please God. And he says here, it is a sweet aroma, verse 41, an offering made by fire. When people give, God says that smells, it makes people feel welcome. Why when they pump chocolate do people want to buy? Because it makes them feel good. There is an aroma. Have you ever been with somebody who is like really, really cheap? I, I have gone, I, I preach, I get invited all over the world. I have, this is of course many years ago, I have gone to preach for someone, they take me out to eat, I'm hungry. And they're looking, they're holding up a handful of change going, I'm going to have the dollar menu. What about you? What am I going to say then? No, I want a T-bone. <laughs> you know. I say, let me pay, but I think to myself, I'm not really comfortable being here. Right? There's something about when you are around someone liberal, you feel welcome. That is true of God. Fruitfulness is linked to liberality, Isaiah 58, 11. If you extend your soul to the hungry, satisfy the afflicted soul, you shall be like a watered garden. Watered gardens are able to produce fruit. Discipleship is connected to liberality. Giving offerings create an atmosphere, a supernatural dimension that helps us to make disciples. Verse 44, I will consecrate the tabernacle of meeting at the altar. I will consecrate Aaron and his sons to minister. There's something about an atmosphere of liberality. It's not just that we pay bills. It's an atmosphere to where disciples are made. And disciples, if you want to preach the gospel, you need a breakthrough dimension in the area of money because that will determine what God does when you go out. Finally, there's a dimension of miracle supply. Verse 46, they shall know that I'm the Lord their God who brought them up out of the land of Egypt that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. He's reminded, why should you be generous with God? God says, remember when you left Egypt on the final night, I told you, go knock on the door of your Egyptian neighbors and ask them, hi, we're leaving. Can we have all of your money and all of your jewelry? Who would do that? But God says, I'm going to do a miracle for you. And that is exactly what happens. When we obey in giving offerings, God goes to work to bless and to multiply. I, I close with this testimony somebody in our church uh, gave me recently. We have a man in our church that is a meteorologist. He forecasts weather. For over 10 years, there has not been any jobs here in the Prescott area. 
That meant that uh, for the last few years, he had to take a job two hours away from here doing rotating shift work. It cost money to commute, wear and tear on the car, dangerous late night drives away from the family, missed church, couldn't be in prayer, couldn't be involved in ministry. I remember uh, sometime last year, I challenged him, if that's true, why don't you believe God to provide? He said the only place there are jobs in his field is a local university, but their rule for hiring is that they only hire people with doctorate degrees, which he does not have. But he began and his wife began to prompt him and so to believe God. And he said, I made a list of things that would bless my family and prayed over that list. I said, God, you not only can provide a local job, you can make this job a financial blessing as well. You are more than able. He said, God started working a full-time job in my career field posted at the university. But again, they wanted somebody with a doctorate degree. I sent an email, weeks passed and they never responded. Shortly after that, he said, my wife and I were both stirred to give a faith offering. When we discussed, we realized God had put the exact amount on both of our hearts. We gave the offering on Sunday morning, January 28th of this year. In the afternoon between the services, I decided to send a text message to the contact I had at the university, the same one who had ignored my email for weeks. Immediately, I got a response and told me to call on a Sunday afternoon. They said, this week, we already have had multiple qualified candidates scheduled to be interviewed, and they're going to fill the position this week. Submit your application as soon as possible. He put it in by Monday night. Tuesday morning, they scheduled an interview. Wednesday was the interview, and the following Monday, February 5th, he received a call saying, I'd been unanimously selected by the committee for the position. They even waived the second interview, contrary to their uh, policy, and the dean said, make sure you negotiate the salary that you want during the hiring process. Listen to this. I believe this job is directly connected to me, finally not leaning on my own understanding and worldly logic and instead putting my faith in God. But the breakthrough came when my wife and I responded with a liberal offering as a step of faith, God proved once again he can always be taken at his word. He surely does reward those who diligently seek him. Let's give God praise and thank God for his goodness. Praise God, we thank you for your miracle provision. Thank God, I want you to bow your heads. Close your eyes all across this place. Thank God, with no one moving around, I want to give a challenge to people that are here who are not right with God. What you need more than anything else is to deal with your sin problem. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Sin cuts you off from God's presence. But there is an answer to addictions. There's an answer for broken hearts. There's an answer to aching loneliness that cannot be filled by anything you try. You need a miracle, and that comes through Jesus Christ. And I'm asking, how many people are here? You are not born again. You're not right with God, but God's dealing with you this morning. If you believe that Jesus died on the cross and you want to pray for God to forgive your sins, you, you want to turn from your sin, what you need to do is pray with an honest heart. How many people are here? You say, Pastor Greg... I need to get right with God. If that's what you want to do, I want you to lift your hand up so I can see it. How many would there be all across this place? I want to pray and get right with God. Lift up your hand right now. God would deal with people. Say, I need Jesus. I know that. Here's my hand. I want to pray and get right with God. Or maybe you're a backslider. Backslider, lift up your hand. Say, I want to come back to God this morning. And I want to turn my life back to Jesus Christ. Backslider, lift up your hand all across this place. Thank God. Then I want you all to look up at me for a moment. We this morning, uh, we are going to, as we do every six months, as I am renewing our pledges. Hopefully, if you're a believer, you should be a tither. And uh, that's actually, bow your heads for a moment. I, I want to give an opportunity. How many of you are here, first of all, before we do any other business, I preached and I spoke about tithing. People, when you agree with God that he is God and you are not, you agree with his plan for your money that is called tithing. I will give God the first 10% of my income and I'll believe God that he will help me financially if I'll obey him. 
How many people are here, you are not a tither, you've never made a decision to tithe before, but this morning you say, Pastor Greg, God has dealt with me, I want to begin to tithe. Lift up your hand right now. How many are here? I want to begin to tithe. Hold your hand up as God would deal with you before God. Some of you made a decision in the past to tithe, but you went back on your word. Maybe you got scared or a bill happened or something. You began to drift. You're no longer faithfully tithing. How many here, you want to return to God in tithing? Lift up your hand all across this place. I want to tithe. I want to get right with God in the area of money. Thank God. Then you can look up at me. Right now, we're going to take pledges. If you are a tither, then one of the things that we do here, we fund our church planting, our outreach program, our missions giving overseas. We do this by pledging. That is, we promise, we make a pledge, which means a promise to God that I am going to give over and above the tithe, very specifically, I'm gonna, I want to invest in outreach, church planting in the U.S., church planting in, uh, uh, across the world in, in different places. So I want right now, I want the ushers to, to come. They can start passing out. You can receive one of these on paper. There are a number of ways that you can give a, a pledge. What we need to know, I don't need your name. Please don't sign this doesn't matter to me. We plan based on how much is pledged. So there are a number of ways to do that. The ushers are getting ready. They're going to pass these out. Number one, you can fill this out and then you can put it in the offering basket in a moment when we're ready to do that. And on it, it says lump sum. How do you want to give the pledge that God, we're going to pray. We're going to ask God to speak to you. How do you want to pay that? Do you want that to be one time, one lump sum, and that's done? Do you want to do that weekly? As you get paid weekly, you want to do that every two weeks, or do you want to give that per month? Mark that so that we know that is simply for our purposes of planning. We know how much there is. You can also, you can text that number there. All you need, I don't need your name, all we need give the dollar amount and then the time frame, the dollar amount, weekly, dollar amount, lump sum, dollar amount, monthly, whatever it might be. You can send an email as well. That's another way that you can do this. If you're watching online, you can do this. You can send an email to preskip at worldcfm.com. The amount and uh, the frequency, lump sum, weekly, biweekly, or monthly any of those options, let us know that there are people. We use that to plan, and now we can plant churches. We're going to plant more churches. Just uh, on the weekend, uh, uh, two already, we have two international works that we're going to plant to come conference time. So God is already at work. He's pleased by what we're doing. We are involved in the most incredible thing in the whole world. And we are seeing, you saw faces. Those are just a fraction of the many people that have been saved, are being saved, and will be saved by what we're doing. If you'll do this, you can get that. They also will give you a pen, and you can fill that out. I'm going to pray right now first before we do anything else. I am going to pray, and I'm going to ask God to speak to you right now. Holy Spirit, I need you to speak to people. This couple, you told them what you wanted them to give by faith. God, you can do that this morning. You can tell people what you want them to give in a pledge by faith. And I'm asking, speak amounts and then grant them faith to believe you so they will obey. And then, God, as they obey, I'm asking that you release blessings on their behalf. And God, use it to save people and build your work in the world. Thank God. You continue filling that out right now. Every person that you want to participate electronically on paper. Amen. When you finish that in just a moment, then what we're going to do, I'm asking you as well, when we sing, after we're going to pray and ask God to bless, 
As we sing, I'm going to invite you to come join with me. I do not ask you to do anything that Lisa and I don't do with you. I believe in what we're doing. I invest in church planting. I'm asking you to bring your pledge card if you have one. And then I'm asking you to bring an offering. This is now a seed that you're going to plant. We're going to believe God. We're going to give. We're going to show God that we want to invest in his work. And then we're going to believe God. Everything we give is a seed. Some of you, you need miracles. Uh, that, that testimony I told, a miracle job. Some of you need miracle jobs. Some of you need help in business. Some of you, it's salvation of a loved one. Others, you, you are facing uh, great difficulties in finances. God is a miracle worker, but he operates, he multiplies seed. What you give is what God multiplies. Let's bow our heads right now. God, I am asking you for a miracle dimension. Every person that participates that is here this morning, every person that is watching online that participates, God, you already know the needs that are on their heart. Jobs, finances, marriage, children, fruitfulness, ministry, breakthroughs, salvation of loved ones. I'm asking you to do miracles as we give now trigger a miracle dimension on our behalf. And I thank you in advance for the miracles in our lives. And I thank you in advance for the testimonies that we're going to hear in these churches as we invest in your great plan. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. Amen. Let's all stand up to our feet. I'm inviting you to come to the front. Join with me. Let's give. They're going to sing while people are coming to give to the Lord right now. Give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus. Shattered dreams, wounded hearts, and broken souls. One more time, give them all to Jesus. Give them all, give them all, give them all to Jesus. Shattered dreams, wounded hearts, and broken souls. God and thank him for his goodness uh, hallelujah Lord God I am grateful Lord God thank you Jesus praise God what an incredible thing we're involved in I was so struck just looking at the photos there we invest of course in people who are not directly from us but Many of the couples you saw there, they are our family from our church and to see them be men and women of God and we have enabled that by our giving. What an incredible thing we're involved in. Thank God. Just two things before we close. 
uh, let you go. And uh, that is number one, water baptism tonight. If you've been saved and you need to get baptized, if you've never been baptized in water, uh, tonight we will baptize you at the conclusion of the service. You can see uh, uh, Devin Riles. He can give you more information about that. That's in our evening service. Pastor Jesse will be preaching. And then we have the baptism at the conclusion of that. So I'm encouraging you. Bring some clothes you can get wet in. And we will baptize you tonight. Final thing. I just want to let you know that uh, I have... Uh, started writing another book. I am writing the book, Uprooting Rejection. And uh, this is based, it's expanded, an expanded version of my Sunday school. But I'm putting out a request as part of this. I would like to include some testimonies. When I did this series, Numbers of People, God Touched You. If you received a deliverance from rejection, in some ways, I'm not going to use people's names so I don't, I don't want to embarrass people, but if God did a miracle for you, write it down, send it to me, give it to me one way or another, because it's well possible that I may include some of those testimonies in the book. And you have to do that quickly. I'm writing it quickly, so it, you can't think about it someday. Do that if God will put that on your heart. That will bless somebody else. Let's bow our heads. We're going to be dismissed in prayer, and uh, Steve Bowman, dismiss in prayer as we go. Amen. God bless you. You can be dismissed.